Yeah, that should work. Oh yeah, okay. We're gonna bring you into the call. Interesting, it's large. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> it's it's a 1080, I just popped up the full screen projector on OBS Studio and then screen shared that. Okay, we'll be like, I'll put you entirely in it and then we'll have to adjust it, but it's fine. It's fine, yeah. it, you know what, okay. this is awesome. <laughs> we'll put you in there. Okay, so let me, uh, we're gonna window capture you in. Boom, perfect. And turn you on, look at that, okay. That is pretty cool. Okay, so we have Aiden in here. Say hi, Aiden. I want to see. Does that work? Hey. Ah, perfect. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't have the hands plugged in, so I don't have that, but the expression <laughs> detection's on, so. That is way cool. Okay. Yeah, so Aiden has introduced me into the world of VTubing. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. So we're going to do some... Um, we're going to get set up on OBS. So I, so here we, here we, here's the way it works. We're going to pretend I'm a noob because I'd probably mess it up anyway. Uh, this is a fresh install. No, it's not. I've already got it on here. We're going to pretend it's a fresh install. Where do I go to download OBS? Uh, so I believe the website is obsproject.org, but if you just Google OBS studio, it'll take you straight to the download page. Okay. So I'm going to, oh, on my correct keyboard, OBS studio. And right here, the very first link is OBS Open Broadcaster Software. Everyone seeing this okay? I'll assume, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is, so just type in OBS Studio uh, in Google. And the first one here, obsproject.com, just like Aiden said, it's a open, open broadcaster software. So we're just going to select that and uh for those of you who have a mac there is a mac version linux and windows uh, we're just going to click windows and you'll see it'll just download pretty quickly i have a previous version but my guess it's an outdated version on this computer mm -hmm. so we're just going to install this version actually just for funsies i'm going to install the previous version see if i can uninstall it yeah, it should also be able to just upgrade in place. Okay, so that so I have that's the installer. Oh, just upgrade over it. Yeah. Okay, we'll just do that. I wonder what version I had. Okay, so we will just install that. Easy peasy so far. Game Playboy two two two. Thanks for the lurk. And do we want it to make uh, changes? Sure, 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 sure. So then we get a welcome screen. Welcome to OBS Studio Setup. We're just gonna hit next. And here's the GNU general public license, basically saying that it's free to use. We'll hit next and uh, just decide where you wanna install it and extract it. And in the end, it doesn't really matter where you choose to install it because all of your like save files are just going to be in the app data folder, which is on your C drive by default anyway. So, so no worries. Okay, and then we're going to hit finish and it's going to launch it automatically. <clears throat> so to give everyone a heads up, I started uh, a few years ago with OBS. So it's changed actually a lot since then. You'll see right here, the chat is popping on the right, as well as the Steam information. So I am already logged in. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, it already knows my login information. So OBS by default, uh, it, can, it can auto connect. It used to be a longer process where you'd have to actually type in your, your stream key, which is this very, this number in Twitch will show you, I will show you mine in just a minute. Uh, <laughs> Joking, never show your stream key to anybody. Uh, that means they can stream under your name and that's not a good thing. But with OBS, you can actually log in through your Twitch account uh, with bypassing any of that. So I wanted a clean one. Let's, should we? So since I, I had already logged in, how, what's the best way to, to get started here, Aiden? Should we, um, should we do a fresh uninstall and delete all the extra files? Uh, so yours isn't really that customized, it looks like. So no, what you can just not. do is 
create a new scene to uh like kind of emulate the original in fact kind of setup. i will just delete these yeah that works too okay okay and the only other thing is to uh hit disconnect account in uh the stream settings and then it'll go back to like basically just the default okay let's do that uh okay and where are the stream settings again is that under uh you can hit settings in there uh, under file yeah okay oh right okay and then stream settings we are going to disconnect account boom okay perfect yes disconnect okay so this starts as off rush mm -hmm. okay perfect okay so i'm going to close this we'll hit apply Okay, so this essentially is a fresh install of OBS. This is what would happen if you installed it. It's not connected to account anymore, so we've gotten back to that beginning point. So what's the next step here? So for me, the first step is always adding something to stream. So when you launch OBS for the first time, you're given a scene, which is kind of a collection of the different sources that you can have kind of outputting video to your stream. Okay, and this By is- By default- Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, by default, you won't have any sources, but you can add one, either like a game that you want to capture or even just an entire monitor capture, whatever you really want to stream right. first. So let's uh, let's start by, how about we just do the desktop in here? Okay. So, so if we wanted to stream, if we had a single monitor and we wanted to stream our desktop, right, that we're playing a game on, mm. we would select, I'll have you walk me through it. I'll, I'll play down. Yeah, so... On the bottom, you'll see a panel called Sources. And in the bottom left of that panel, you'll see a plus button just to add a new source. Um, if you click on that, you'll get a whole list of different things that you can add. Um, the one that you want for showing your entire screen is Display Capture. So that's this one. And let's go over some of the other ones here. So we have an audio input capture. Mm -hmm. what, what would this be good for? Um, that's if you have like an external audio input. So say, for instance, you're using a capture card or something like that, and you only want to get the audio from it, or you have like a mixer, you can use that to capture audio. Um, audio output, same idea, but in reverse, I think. Okay. <clears throat> um, a browser source is usually used for like alerts that you can get from uh, an internet source. So if you set up like Streamlabs or something like that, it'll show you follow alerts and subscriber alerts, things like that. Color source is a little more complicated. It's just a color, but you can use that in some interesting ways with like the filters that are available in uh, OBS. Display capture obviously shows everything that's on your monitor. Game capture is a very optimized version of the window capture that works well for games. It'll make sure that it has a stable frame rate and doesn't trip any anti-cheat functions of the game that you're playing. Um, image will display an image. An image slideshow will cycle through a few different images. A media source is any sort of video file or MP3 file that you have that you want to have playing in the background. A scene will add you know, any of the scenes that you've created, so a whole group of sources, into another scene. Um, this is good for like picture-in-picture -picture displays when you're doing like esports broadcasts and things like that. Um, text will just allow you to add some text that you can change the font of, change the color, add backgrounds, things like that. A video capture device is what you use to capture a uh, capture card source. So if you're using two computers or you're streaming off of a game console and you have a capture card in between your computer and the game, that's what you'll use. And window capture is for any sort of other window that you want to show on your stream, usually used for like uh, you know, Firefox or Chrome or you know any sort of game uh, window that isn't a game. Yeah. So for example, Aiden's being streamed in right now through uh, window capture. So we connected via Slack Messenger, and I was able to capture the window from Slack and put that in OBS uh, over everything else in this scene. And that is how he appears on the right-hand corner. Um, my image right here in the left-hand corner is um, a video capture device, so that's a webcam. And then uh, for audio, um, you can see right here, I'm gonna slide it up. Um, I'm using a, a different microphone. We'll talk about all these, the hardware things as we go but that is set up through uh, audio input capture. So someone said, would an emulator work better in window or game capture? And Cable says game capture. Okay, so let's, uh, so what were we doing first? We were gonna do a display capture? Yeah. Okay. And so just to show you what this will look like, it'll keep capturing itself. It's very entertaining. And we will just, we'll set it, we'll, it, it pops up with a little um, create or select a source. So you can either create new or add existing. If you've already created one before, you can select them from different scenes, but we will just call this monitor one because 
It's my only monitor I'm using right there. Hit OK. And you can see right there, it shows a, a preview of what you're seeing, which is itself, uh, ref it's a whole uh, eternal mirrored uh, version of itself. And you'll actually see that you've probably noticed these a lot on like YouTube videos and tutorial videos on how to do stuff like this. When they're doing a video mm. and they hop in between these kind of things, it'll always show that like this mirrored version of their monitor or whatever for a second as it switches. But we'll just hit OK on that, and now you can see that this is, if I were to stream right now, this would be what I would stream. And it's, it's kind of meta because I'm, I'm streaming my other stream. Actually, I could stream myself streaming too. Anyway, sorry, I digress. <laughs> um, we'll do that in just a minute. Pepperoni says, you can see into the matrix. Uh, welcome to the chat, Pepperoni. So the next thing that I usually set up, which uh, is going to be a little different because it doesn't look like your computer has a microphone set up, is the audio. Yeah. Um, I'll usually go down to the audio mixer, which is right next to sources. And if you click on the little gear icon underneath each of your audio sources, um, you can see the properties menu, which will allow you to select which device you're actually getting audio from. So if you have like virtual audio cables, or if you're like me and you have a bunch of different audio devices, you can choose whichever one you want to actually be broadcast out to stream. Right. So just for the sake of setting this up, Aiden, let's, I'm gonna actually mm -hmm. grab a webcam. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here's a, and we'll, once again, we'll go over hardware again later, but this is just a basic Logitech. So I'm gonna plug it in just so we can see it pop up. Because right now when I tried to connect an audio device, a device, it didn't pop up at all. Mm -hmm. uh, this Logitech webcam actually has a, a microphone in it. So we can do both. We can set up the uh, camera as well as, um, as well as the audio. And while we're at it, Aiden, since we're setting all this up, we could even show you the, the chroma key settings if you wanna do a green screen, just because we have it here and mm -hmm. I happen to have one right here. Because this is yeah, gonna awesome. show. This is going to show, um, I'm going to actually put it on my other monitor here, because this is going to show my green screen without the settings, and we might as well just try it. So let's see how this works. So that just set up, right? So we're going to go to audio capture again. I'm just going to double click it since we already created it. And uh, we're going to now, now we have a default here, but we can drop it down and we have an option now. It's the microphone HD pro webcam C920. So I'm just going to click that and hit OK. That's the same one I have. Yeah, it's the go-to, it's a good one. And it's trying to tell me a bunch of stuff that I don't care about, we're just ignore that. So now if you notice, um, you notice the movement that's happening now when I talk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's the audio capture catching that. So, it's, so my microphone's working well, it's working so well that it's actually moving up past the red barrier. Now I'm not an expert on audio, but what I usually try to do is adjust it so that the volume's kind of staying within the yellow, not the red, because the red tends to be that blown out kind of horrible microphone sound. And I yell when I stream a lot, so. Okay, so we have the audio hooked up. Um, what's next, Aiden? Yeah, so the next thing that I usually do is I set up the desktop audio. So okay. one problem that's really common with a lot of streamers is you'll have your game audio way too loud and you can't hear the streamer. So what I like to do is usually pop open some sort of music in the background. First, check to make sure that my desktop audio is actually capturing. Okay. And then I'll say a couple lines just to make sure that my microphone audio is at about the same level or even a little bit higher than my desktop audio. So I was just checking to make sure my desktop audio was working. And you can see when I just test the volume, the desktop audio moves, right? So now what mm -hmm. do I need to do? So you want to make sure that your desktop audio isn't going to overpower your you know, microphone audio. So while you have something playing in the background on okay. your desktop at about the level of your, your game audio, just you know, talk into your microphone and check to make sure that the, right. the two audio mixers are about at the same level. Okay. So how should we do that? Should we? Um, a... I usually pop up on like copyright free music or something in the background. And then, you know, yeah, or if I'm that. playing a game, I'll pop up in the game as well. Let's, let's Google some copyright free music really quick. Oops, so I've got two, two, I've got one keyboard on my desk and one on my lap right now doing this. Okay. 
All right. Premium beats. Great, great. Royalty free music. Ben sound. I don't know. Let's check this out. You guys ready for this? This is good. Dubstep. Here we go. Yeah, and so you can see with that music playing that it seems like your desktop audio is a little bit louder than your microphone right now. So I just slide that slider down to your desktop audio, maybe down to minus eight, somewhere around there, maybe ten, all the way to ten, somewhere around there. Just to make sure that your microphone audio is always going to be audible over the desktop audio. Awesome. I'm turning that off. Great. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm not even sure how loud that was for you, but it was actually blasting in my ears. Um. So we'll turn that off for a minute. So, okay, so we have, okay, so we've tested the audio for the desktop. So now if I'm doing an art stream, I can play uh, some music behind me, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we um, got wubba dubba dub dub, that's awesome. Okay, so what's next? So the next thing that we're gonna configure is all the actual stream settings. So on the right side, you'll see a bunch of buttons like start streaming, start recording, start virtual camera. There should be a button there that says settings. Okay. Um, when you click on that, it'll pop open a menu full of all sorts of different settings. Um, a lot of them are completely down to personal preference, um, but some of them are actually really critical to how you're going to stream. One of the things that I recommend everyone check when they first start this is, if you'll see here on the general screen under output, there's one for show confirmation dialog when starting streams, when stopping streams, and when stopping recording. Um, I highly recommend checking all three of those boxes so that you don't accidentally go live when you don't mean to. Awesome. OK. Yeah. So from there, the next thing that you're going to want to do is set up your video settings. So in the same settings menu, there's a section called video on the left. Um, and this is going to determine how, your, how OBS actually handles what it's capturing. So by default, the base canvas resolution will be whatever resolution your monitor is. Um, on websites like Twitch and to a certain extent YouTube, 1080p or 1920 by 1080 is the highest that you're going to be able to get. And for most people, that's their native resolution, so that's not a problem. Um, but depending on how good your internet connection is, you may want to scale that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you're streaming at 1080p, 60 FPS, it uses a, quite a bit of internet, and a lot of people, especially on mobile, won't be able to watch your stream because you don't get quality options. So I generally recommend going down to 1280 by 720. For the output scaled resolution, um, it, you should leave the base canvas resolution the same. Got it. And the truth is most people won't notice the difference um, between, so between 1080 and 720, um, that's like uh, most Nintendo Switch. I think in handheld mode, it's 720. Uh, it's up to 1080 on the TV, but there's it's, it's not a huge discernible difference. Hmm. Yeah, with regards to the question about streaming on ultra wide monitors, you'll have to scale down your captures to fit into a 16 by nine display. Um, I don't know if you can stream ultra wide on Twitch, but most people just don't. You'll end up with some black bars on your stream, but you can usually use those or cover those up with like an overlay or like PNGs, your camera can fit there. You know, you can find an interesting way to use that space. But yeah, for the video settings, that should be everything. You know, most streams you're going to want to leave at 60 FPS. That's just a smoother experience. If you are running into issues streaming at 60 FPS, you can drop that down to 30. But I recommend staying at 60 because you might as well. Uh, the next thing to go to then is your output. OK. So by default, you'll be in the simple mode, which for most people is totally fine. There are some things that you can do in the advanced mode that you can't really do in simple mode, but those you know we can go over later on in the, in the semester. Here, you have a choice to set a few different things. So the first and most important thing is your encoder. So if you have a gaming computer with a really strong graphics card, and NVIDIA graphics card in particular, you might want to use the hardware encoder or NBank. This will run all the encoding off of your graphics card, which may give you slightly lower frame rates, but usually you'll have enough GPU overhead for most games to actually make that possible. If you don't have a dedicated graphics card or your graphics card is kind of slow, you'll want to swap that over to the software encoding, which will use your CPU instead. Yeah. 
So then for video bitrate, this depends on the settings that you set in your video before. So if you're at 720p, 60 FPS, you'll usually want to stream at about 2,500 to 3,000 kilobits per second. But if you're at 1080p, 60, the default resolution, you'll want to bump that all the way up to 6,000, which is the maximum that Twitch will allow. For the audio bitrate, just leaving that on the default 160 is totally fine. You can even lower it if you want to 128. Most people can't tell the difference between 128 all the way up to 320. Some people might be able to, but you know, it's not going to be that discernible of a difference. Awesome. Yeah. That's... And if you plan on go ahead. I was gonna say, if you plan on recording your videos or editing them later on, you may find it easier to change the recording format under the recording settings to MP4 um, rather than MKV and changing what encoder you're using down there as well. Um, MKV is a lot harder to work with in some programs, especially the Adobe suite. So MP4s are just generally a uh, better choice. Yep. And keep in mind when you're recording your own videos, <clears throat> um, you, can, you can click off the setting when you first start as a streamer on Twitch Remember that you have to mark, uh, you have to select that you want it to save your VODs. Otherwise, they'll leave after a couple days. Um, but also remember, if, if you have poor internet or you have connection issues, that's the video that's going to be recorded on Twitch's end. So um, a lot of people recommend if you want to keep your video to, to upload for something else, uh, recording it on your own machine, you'll have a much higher quality version of it. So keep that in mind. Scruffy says, I wonder if University Ethernet is stable enough for 6K. Um, if nobody's at school, the the University Internet is insane. Yeah. it's I, I had my remote desktop running from the, the grad lab all winter break, and my speeds were absolutely insane. They, they have their, yeah, their Internet is bananas. Okay. All right, what's next? <clears throat> so... We're not going to do anything fancy with the audio since we already set that up before. There are some tricks you can do with like a virtual audio cable, but the next step is just connecting to whatever account you're going to use for streaming and then actually starting a stream. All right. So if you go to the stream settings, um, the setup is actually really easy for Twitch. I'm not sure how simple it is for the other platforms, but since we're on Twitch, you know. Yeah. So you can, so within this, I'm just going to, we'll set it up on Twitch, but right from right in here, you have Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, Restream, Twitter, Periscope. You have some other ones, um, but really with most of them like Trovo, et cetera, that don't have a, a service, um, you can connect with another account just by using the stream key. You could also connect the stream key through Twitch, uh, but they have automated the process just like Aiden was saying. So let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's look at that auto. Yeah, so if you hit connect account, it'll just pop up with the login page for Twitch. Um, if you have two-factor authentication, it'll prompt you to put in your you know, authentication key or whatever that is and remember the device for 30 days. You won't actually have to log in again after those 30 days are up, but it will prompt you for that. And then from there, everything else is just set up for you. It should automatically pick the best server for you, but you can also choose specific servers if you think they'll work better for you um, in terms of latency. But leaving everything default is usually the way to go. Yeah, so I'm not going to hop in there yet and do that because I don't want to show off any passwords or anything. <laughs> um, but once that connects, uh, you go back to um, general. Basically, once it's connected to Twitch, to Twitch, you can just hit start streaming and it will start streaming. Uh, within those general settings, you can do a lot of stuff like set it up to to record as it streams, etc. There are a bunch of options, but that what we went up, just went over is nuts and bolts. Uh, this would stream right now, but if we wanted to get uh, our our webcam set up, we should probably do that too, right? Yeah, that's a good idea. So we're just going to go over here to the sources, just like Aiden just taught me. I'm learning fast, and you're going to hit this plus button here. And then we want to select one of these. What we want to hit is our video capture devices. Uh, this is your webcam. Uh, whether you're using a laptop or anything with a webcam, basically. There's actually some really cool tech now where you can actually use uh, your cell phone as a webcam. I haven't done that, but we're just going to select that. It'll pop up again. We can, re we can name this if you use different web webcams. Like, like I say, a lot of times I will have a separate webcam above like my sketchbook so I can draw. Um, so I name them accordingly. So that we'll just name this Logi. 
and say OK. And there's only one on there, so it's going to select that one. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to try and turn this so my green screen is all covered for fun and accidentally turn my other monitor off. OK, so here's the webcam. I'm going to move into position here. And this has a real different looking color than my other cam webcam. That's interesting. So we hit OK on that one. And you can see right there, it pops into your screen with this little, uh, it gives you a little box. And I can resize this and adjust it. But that is basically mm -hmm. how I would place myself uh, in the screen or into the right section of an overlay if I have an overlay. We'll talk about overlays later. But this is just the nuts of bolts, just how to get streaming, right? So now if we want to use the green screen, I'm just gonna go over that really quick. Um, it's okay not to use a green screen. Most, most professional streamers actually don't use a green, green screen. It seems like specific genres or game types use green stream, uh, green screen. Yeah, I can't even say green screen. Plugged in gamer says, ah, new angle. Yes, it's a new angle. So uh, have you ever used a green screen, Aiden? Uh, I have actually. Um, since I do virtual streaming, we used to have to chroma key out every time. Now most of the programs just do transparent capture, so you don't even have to do that. But the easiest way to add a green screen is just to right click on whatever source you're trying to green screen and add a filter. And that's what I'm doing. I'm clicking on the filter. And then what do I do? Um, so the filter that you want to add is something called a chroma key. I believe it's an effect filter rather than audio or video filter. So down here, we're gonna hit plus under effect filter. And there's one mm -hmm. right here called chroma key. I'm gonna select that, hit okay. And you can see up here, it kind of grays out whatever's gonna be chroma keyed. And we're gonna leave it on the defaults for this one. We're just gonna hit okay and close. And you can mm -hmm. see right there, it's, it's not perfect. My lighting needs adjustment, but I'm relatively chroma keyed out. You can still see the, the outline of the box. So maybe there's <laughs> a few things I need adjusted. Yeah, you can change what color it's chroma keying out, change how uh, fuzzy the chroma key is, which is basically you know how much will it bleed into other colors, things like that. And it's mostly a matter of guessing and checking until everything works. Uh, so someone just said, can you go over uh, display capture again? Yeah, so I'll, I'll double click that display capture. So display, you would just check um, whatever display you're using. So really it's whatever options. If you're using dual monitors, it's gonna dual monitors, it's gonna come up with display one or display two. Select mm -hmm. display one, hit okay. Um, for example, let's do an example of a game. It's gonna be hard to do a game capture on this one. Let's do a web capture just for fun. So we're yeah, gonna sure. go, we're gonna go to Twitch really quick and we're just gonna, we're gonna go to Twitch really quick and we're just gonna, we're gonna mute me because I'm talking now on here. <laughs> but let's, let's watch, let's, Let's do a display capture of another streamer. Let's see how that would work, or a, a web capture. Yeah. So, um, so for you guys watching, who's a favorite streamer, streamer of yours? I'll let chat pick one. Checkpoint Professor! That's probably the best streamer. Who's your second fa best favorite streamer? Uh, right someone now. said Nade Shot. I'm not sure. Oh, he's live right now. Who? Nade, uh, Shot? Nade Shot. Okay, let's let's try. Let's try Nade Shot. So Nade Shot is live right now. We're gonna click on that. Oh no! Okay. Gabby was gaming in her bedroom. Then she ate some chips and got cheese dust clogged in her controller. Should have had so we're gonna go full screen on this. Snack that's easy to eat mm -hmm. because it's Totino's. And then we're gonna over. select our OBS Totino's here. Get bonus <laughs> in -game content. So that's actually just showing my monitor <laughs> anyway. In your eyes or something. Yeah, bro. The sun was in my eyes. So I want to just, I don't want to do a display capture. I just want to capture him, right? Then mm -hmm. I don't have this whole over display OBS overlay thing. So let's try that. So let's, we're just gonna check the box on the monitor. We, the little eyeball will actually turn it off. It's nice, the eyeball will turn any of these off. So we're gonna, exactly. hit, we're gonna hit plus again. Get out of my way. And we're gonna select by browser. I am afraid. And we'll type Twitter. 
Uh, so the the way that I would do this is would be with a with a browser source. Yeah. Instead, I would use the window capture to just capture Chrome. Let's try a couple of these. Okay, so you're right. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Okay, so um, window capture, right? What did I select? Browser? Uh, browser starts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Browser is what you'd use for overlay. I'm sorry. I'm confusing everybody. Yes, window capture. I'm glad Aiden's here. So we're going to do window capture. We'll just hit OK on this. They got an op. It's a rain. And you can see by default, it's just going to grab that Chrome. It's going to grab whatever windows you have open, and you can choose whichever ones you want. So I'm going to hit OK on that. So you can see this is nice because now it doesn't have that OBS overlay thing going over it. Man, and you notice I'm gone now, right? My little image down there with the green screen is gone. Damn, bro, I should have been able to kill that rain at the beginning of the round. Bro, earlier It's because today, the window capture is on the top night, layer, so every, I want to move man, that I down. Like every corner I corn, uh, what the and fuck? totally every turn his volume down, too. Uh, I was, I was one-tapping <laughs> people, on. no problem. We're adjusting him. And <laughs> every turner I corn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that man. Yeah, I, got, I, got I don't you. know. How there we go. Killing my ears, dude. Okay. There we go. I could have got that. Okay, really so we want to move him down. I want to be, I want to be nade shot now. So I'm going to move my Logitech camera. I can just slide that right up, and then I'm overlaid over that. Did anyone have any questions so far? Dude, I'm so fucking stupid. All right, nade shot. Two out mid. <laughs> And he is not having a great game so far. You can do better, Nade Shot. Come on, buddy. <laughs> How about, you know, Papa Totino's roll? That'll help. Okay, in a nutshell, that is how to set up OBS. Brian Salisbury Art, thanks for the... <laughs> Stop it. Stop giving me the Prime subs. It's actually okay for faculty give me, to give me their Twitch Prime subs, but not students. Uh, Chompy Womp, this, guy's, this guy is... PG. Okay, so that was fun. So we'll we'll look at some of your favorite streamers in just a minute, especially since we have an assignment about it. Okay, does anyone have any questions about OBS at the moment? I understand this is like high level. We're just going getting up uh, set up really quick. But essentially, if I were if I were logged into my Twitch and I hit start streaming, you would see just like I am live right now on Twitch. But what you would see, like the crappier webcam version over here. What is the ground speed velocity of laden? I can't remember. I think it's like 42. That's right. African or European swallow. Yes. Another side note. If your window changes resolution or size, you will have to resize it in OBS. Should we talk about how to do that? Yeah, sure. So... As you saw when you went out of full screen on Twitch, the okay. browser the browser source actually shrank down to the size that it is now. So what you can do is you can grab one of those red handles on the outside and just kind of stretch the source one way or the other. By default, it'll be stuck to the same resolution, so you can't like make it super wide or super tall. Um, it'll keep the same aspect ratio. But every time that you uh, kind of resize a window like that, like if you resize your browser or if you change the resolution in a game, you'll have to go back into OBS and check to make sure that it fits the canvas size again. And that works for most everything, including like the webcam. Like yep. I can scale up my image, blah, blah, blah. Uh, pretty simple. But so the, so the nuts and bolts here is we got our webcam running, we got our audio running, and we got a display and a window capture running. That is, is everything you need to get started with your 10 um, stream journals. That'll get you going. Jimbo Lewis, thanks for stopping by. And if you guys have any questions about more advanced features or anything, feel free to put a message into the Discord chat or shoot me a DM. I can talk about some of the other features. Like for instance, you can force certain audio tracks to not show up on VODs to avoid DMCA. You can set up game captures or picture in picture displays, things like that. Yeah. Even reactive PNGs that'll go off when you talk so that you don't have to use a webcam necessarily. Things like that. Yeah, and I think, uh, Aiden, what we could do is set up a, a channel in Discord um, for these mm -hmm. types of questions so that we can answer them or share links on how to solve those problems so that everyone can, can see them. 
Scruffy says, yeah, setting up audio tracks would be super nice to learn about. Yeah, awesome. it's something that I'm still learning right now because I don't have any virtual audio cables or a mixer, but um, if you do have access to those, definitely helpful. Okay. Plugged in Gamer says, I was just messing with the colors from a webcam and posted it in Discord. What do you think? We will check it shortly, my friend. But as for now, um, so we just did OBS. We just set that up and you can tell there was a little bit of setup involved and that's all, often the common complaint is supposedly quote unquote uh, OBS vanilla is not, a, it takes a little bit more learning curve to set up. Everything we just did will get you started. Um, but now we're going to check out Streamlabs OBS, which Aiden's not as familiar with, but I'm going to go through the whole process of getting that going um, because that is another option. It's actually uh, far easier when you begin your stream. Um, to get started. So so the, so Streamlabs, they took OBS and they put a bunch of third-party additions to it, plugins and, and their own wrapper over it. And so that's a, it's somewhat of a paid service. Um, but I'm going to show how easy it is to get started with Streamlabs OBS. Just hit enter. And just like with uh, OBS, uh, you can type in Streamlabs OBS and it will pop up the first one, the best free live streaming software um, because they use the best streamed live streaming live service software. Apparently Pokemon and Matt Heafy um, like it. Okay, so we're going to download Streamlabs OBS. I don't think I have it installed on this computer. Uh, Pastel Nave, you can use XSplit. Um... XSplit, I found, has a bit of a harder setup, and having to pay for the license also uh, is kind of a drain, considering it doesn't add too, too many features over OBS. But yes, you can use XSplit. Yeah, you can use whatever you want for the class. There, there are multiple... The, the setup is very similar for all of it. So with OBS, mm -hmm. like I've streamed on YouTube, Trovo, Facebook, and I've used OBS for all of them, and the, it's really... Um, Oh, YouTube is like a weird setup to live stream, but you still use a stream key just like anything else. Oh, okay, so we're gonna click open on Streamlabs OBS. We're gonna say yes. Let's see what happens. Let's see what kind of magic ensues. <clears throat> okay, I agree. We're gonna install that one too. We're just installing all sorts of stuff. Uh, Plugged in gamer says, "How are you streaming without these? Without without what? Okay, we're gonna complete slobs. I use uh, just OBS. Slobs is great. So this is also known as slobs. Uh, so it's gonna ask you to connect. Um, we could look. It's got D Live and Nemo TV on there." Uh, so we could, we're going to skip it. We're, no, you know what? Uh, let's see what happens. No, nah, we're going to skip it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> welcome to Streamline. So we can either start fresh or import from OBS, which is kind of nice. It will actually take all of your OBS settings. So I'm going to do that. It's going to, we're going to import from OBS and we're going to hit start. So look at that. It took all of my settings from the previous OBS and got it started. So the thing is, you'll notice it looks almost identical. Um, the difference is, it'll give you a little tutorial for anything. Uh, it's just a little bit of a cleaner interface. Where is this? Go live. I'm going to click go live even I couldn't. So it's just looking for a stream key now. What is, what is the deal? It's locked. It's mad at me. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we're going to hit this. So it has all the same general settings, everything um, that that um, that uh, OBS does. The difference is uh, on your stream and everything else, you can type in your service in Twitch and all the settings we went through with OBS, it, it'll kind of do a, a wizard setup and it will optimize it. It will, it will check your internet speed. It will give you the optimal bit rate for everything. And so all the stuff we went over to set up that Aiden is not so knowledgeable about, um, 
The nice thing is Streamlabs kind of dumbs that down for us. So you can just say, do it for me and it will connect all that stuff. Uh, I am not, I don't think it'll actually show me at all of it without, um, without connecting to my Twitch account, which I'm not going to do online for very, <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> Um, but that essentially, um, I think that's the nuts and bolts. The setup is very simple or similar to OBS uh, vanilla, but that does have some bells and whistles to automate all those issues you had. So I was turned on to Streamlabs in my first streaming class. I was using OBS at that time. And one of my students said, no, you have to use slobs. You have to use slobs. And I did. And, and in class, it took like two seconds to actually get my, my stream up and running. It's really intuitive. The nice thing is they have built-in overlays and stuff on the Streamlabs, their website, um, that you can adjust all your alerts and everything else. We'll talk, but I'm going to wait on that stuff. We're going to talk about alert setup and overlays at another class. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we could be going till midnight tonight, and you would just, you'd, I think you'd have school fatigue. 3D Mentor, how are you doing, my buddy? Yeah, there, there are some trade-offs with slobs versus OBS. Yeah. So since slobs is based off of OBS, it's just basically another coat of paint on top of it. It's usually about a version or two behind in terms of features. Yep. Um, and in addition, because of all the extra stuff that's already built into Streamlabs OBS, it will be a little harder on your computer as you're streaming. Um, so if you do have a lower spec machine, using OBS Studio may give you a performance benefit. I've noticed that it's about twice as heavy on my CPU usage to use slobs over OBS Studio. Yeah, so so I used to be a huge uh, Slobs fan. And for mm -hmm. all the reasons that Aiden just mentioned, I went back to OBS. So uh, 3D Mentor, he's, he's, that's, a, that's another professor at the University of Utah. I got him onto uh, Streamlabs. He still uses that. And now I have since ditched that for, for greener pastures, which I think is OBS. Can you quickly show how we get the translucent background? Are you talking about my green screen? Because I can, if that's what you mean. Okay, so here we go. Um, so you see, here's my, my background right now. I'm gonna get into that camera. So this is the translucent background. You can see the, the lighting has issues on that, which interestingly enough, on this camera that I'm actually streaming from, it all looks fine, right? So it's all with adjusting your lighting because I think the lighting's a little different over where this camera's pointing, it changes it. But essentially, this is pretty easy. Once you have a green screen on your background, you can go to, um, go to your camera, that Logitech, we'll double click that. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna go to the filters. I'm gonna right click it and select filters. And you can see one of them is activated and it, it selects your, um, the chroma key filter is what I have activated. So I click on that chroma key and it has a bunch of options on here. If you have a different colored screen, like you have a, a red or a blue or a custom screen, you can use that. There are a bunch of options. I can adjust some of these and try and fix <laughs> some of my issues. That doesn't fix it at all. Or I can do the smoothness. I can try to make it so it's more transparent, but you can see I just keep messing stuff up. You can make it brighter. There we go. Now I'm perfect. How's that? Okay. And that, that is how you do the green screen. What do you guys think? <laughs> okay, we messed it up. So we're gonna, we're gonna right click and select the filter again and look for a reset button. And I don't see one. So I'm going to remove that and put a new one on. So we're gonna grab it again. You can see you have several filters here. Uh, we're gonna grab our chroma key again, hit done. All right, that kind of reset it for me. Um, now I can adjust it. Because it's having, actually, more similar. Here we go, here we go, look at that. Boom. That's much better, right? So there are some tweaks within the chroma key. So even if you don't have perfect lighting, you can adjust it a little bit. TM Fez says horrific. Brian Salisbury says, I believe in ghosts. Okay, any other questions? 
Um, I know this is a, this, I always get nervous, like, uh, barfing out all this information. It's a lot of information, especially if you're not familiar with OBS. Um, we will, I will have this video and this VOD is available on my channel, but I'll also put it up on, um, up on the, the canvas so you guys can watch it again and go over the steps. Okay, I think no more questions. So we have a few minutes left, left of class. Uh, Scruffy says, also, if for some reason you want to stream, stream Destiny 2, for some reason it's like the only game that isn't supported by Game Capture, really? You can't Game Capture Destiny 2? Uh, it's the fault of their anti-cheat program. CSGO has the same problem with the new secure mode that they added, uh -huh. where it just won't allow OBS to hook in or Streamlabs OBS to hook in, so you'll have to stream with, like, desktop capture or something like that. Um, and there are some other games that don't play well with game capture, but for the most part, oh, at this point, most of them do. Huh. That's That seems like a mistake on their part. But, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, Jimbo Lewis says some games do not like game capture. Okay. So Aiden and I are available in the Discord for any questions. So one of your assignments is to, uh, like I said, watch three streamers, it's three streams this week as well, and take notes, uh, filling out the questions that I gave in Canvas. But I think it's always fun um, because game streaming is such a diverse landscape. Does anybody have, we, let's spend a few, let's, let's skip through some channels for a minute. Let's check out some new streamers that maybe we didn't know about. What do you guys say? <laughs> 3D Mentor only watches, uh, Matt is streaming DCC. So who's Matt? Oh, Matt? Oh, one of our teachers? Start a recording and watch it back at max. Make sure every, okay. Do you know how to test a stream without being visible in slobs? Yeah, you can, you can record it and then watch it back. That's a, that's a good way to do it. Um, there are, I'll post a link, remind me in the Discord, there is a way to run a test stream um, through OBS. I've never actually done it, but there is a way to do it so that, so you're not listed, so people can't see you. It kind of hides your stream. Nobody has any favorite streamers? 3D Mentor says every stream is a test stream. That's, that is true. Type cast RPG in my recommended channels and they're playing D&D. &D. Okay, let's check this out. I want to see a D&D &D stream. What does that look like? Type cast RPG. There they are. And this is another big bard speech sort of moment is address the, uh, you know, the Rathamirans, address the uh, former members of House Ternaxian, you know, that. This is awesome. Down. This is awesome. Um, we defeated Moreland, but we didn't save the world. What Good we news. Saved was the future. They defeated Moreland, but they did not defeat the world. No, this is this is fantastic. I feel bad talking over these guys talking about um, the Moreland's. Long as they have a recorded history, and and if we fix that by going to war, we haven't. Oh, let's look at the chat. I want to see what the chat looks like. What I'd like to do. 48 viewers that's not bad they've been doing this for an hour almost two hours there's a door volume is quiet let's turn it up into that realm into that plane um what i'd like to do is the meta 
this is the piece of um, uh, I want to be nice uh, I want to say hi Grisk hi Grisk is <laughs> actually roll out this technology actually roll out uh, assistance for everybody and uh, okay. Dexora assuming Dexora still wants to hang out with uh, with Odrak is this the game? Is this actually the game? I apologize. I've, building, I've never played D&D. Building ships, building things that take the wealth of the cloudscape okay. and begin moving it into the bone lands. Okay, who, who, who's are, next? Who's next? What should we try next? Appropriative of bone lander stuff and are actually more like, hey, here's, here's what these people built with all of the things they stole from you. I don't, what's like Matt's, what's back. Matt's and name? That's kind of going to be <clears throat> Odrak's life's work at this point. I want to help you with that, Odrak. Let me be your ambassador to the boat. Oh, that would be awesome. That'd Kafka be... and I. I love these people. For... I like Kafka. Yes. <laughs> I like you too. I like you too. <laughs> but Kafka. It's super, in... it's super important to me that Kafka know how much I like not being eaten by Costco. <laughs> um, well, and and uh, now how does Dexora fit into all this? Uh, because you did kind of fall in love. And also she was, you know, directly working with... Okay, we're moving on. I'm kind of enamored with that. Kind of cool interesting things to know about how layers function in photoshop i mean first of all organizationally it's important to know you can rename them by double clicking on the name so i'll just say kirby here have this named as torterra um you also have an opacity slider um that can be useful under certain circumstances and you have a blend mode which give you kind of okay. different ways in it's which an art the stream. pixels in one layer affect okay. the pixels what? in the layer this is below. awesome so instead of having normal kirby we can set it to say whoa dash ducks bottom, it's a live stream where you uh, feed ducks lighten which will class exception is classception another one okay I think How's they just mean because you're point? streaming Wait, a stream of another class point, oh that's what this is Mm -hmm. Look, he just called party. me out. This is so meta. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyways, so. Um... <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, it's Gabe. Oh, Gabe, hello. I had to see your avatar. Uh, good to see you, Gabe. We're just going through like a very, very fast kind of introduction to Photoshop. Um, Should I tell him? Should I tell him what we're doing? Uh, huh, 3D yeah, meds. Uh, 3D meds are just dead. He spilled the beans. Is important. Um, of course, you can mess with blend <laughs> mode and opacity. Um, if you double click on a layer anywhere, I have 27 students. Of the, kind of the layer uh, name that will bring up researching layer styles, your stream. which you know are kind of have some limited use. They can be a little gimmicky, but for instance, if we want to apply an outline to Kirby, yeah. we can drop in a stroke, or we could drop in very a, cool. Uh, Drop in a shadow. Drop oh, a shadow. let's do. Let's rate him when we're done. Kind of That's awesome. Here. Give that drop shadow. Okay, I think we're about done. Um, so there are some things. There so here's to play what we'll with, do. Um, but functionally stop. important. I, I'm, uh, I want to draw your can't attention hear myself. to. Uh, this has been super fun. So hopefully this was helpful for everybody. Did everyone was this helpful for everyone learning a little bit more about OBS uh, slobs, all that good stuff. We'll put some more links in the. Uh, mm -hmm in the discord and especially as we get going i'm hoping to start building up a resource as well in there uh, because there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of stuff to go over and there's going to be a lot of stuff to go over in this class so next week um make sure to be here on time uh my friend roy ru is going to be talking to us about his experience in game streaming and uh then we're going to break out into groups talk about our first assignments this is going to be a lot of fun 3 Dementor says you have inspired me to start streaming. I, I hope so. I hope I've inspired you to do something good. Do something great, 3 d Mentor. All right. With that being said, class is over. But, but the, one of the important things to do at the end of a stream is to raid. Aiden, can you tell us what a raid is? Yeah, so a raid is when you're ending your stream, you can actually send your viewers over to another channel, usually another streamer that you support, or you know, just somebody whose content you're about to go watch. 
So the way that you do that is you type in slash raid and then that channel name in the chat and it'll automatically start one for you. Right, so let's do that. So let's go slash raid. There are different options within dashboard. We'll just do it the normal way. Slash raid and then we're gonna raid Matt. So yeah, this is a way to kind of pay it forward. Um, and it, it helps other people build up their stream. It's a good way of networking with other streamers as well. If you have a classmate and you want to help them out with a raid when you're done streaming, you notice they're on. It's just a way of sharing your channel to other people. Um, the biggest raid I ever got, uh, someone named Simple Flips raided, gave me a 1600 follower or person raid. And it was, it was one of the weirdest, craziest experiments, uh, experiences I've ever had. Dot exe. Okay, so I'm going to send you all off to, to Matt. It's going to totally disrupt his class, and that's what makes it funny. Um, everyone, be nice, say hello, and tell him the checkpoint, uh, the checkpoint professor sent you.